Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, and several members of Congress left for an important Asia visit. Despite Taiwan not being mentioned by Pelosi's office during the tour, her plane did land there. According to Jim Weismayer, a policy analyst for Pro Farmer, China expressed its views on the subject prior to the meeting through a number of remarks and, most recently, by holding live-fire drills on the island of Pingtan in the Taiwan Strait. Zhao Lijian, a spokesperson for China's foreign ministry, states that the Chinese People's Liberation Army would not sit back in regard to the visit. China dispatched warplanes to the Taiwan Strait in response to Lijian's remarks. China declared it would resume its live-fire drills encircling Taiwan after Pelosi's plane left Taiwan. In the meanwhile, Pelosi's visit is not intended to test whether China will stay in their box, according to Senator Jerry Moran, or RKS, who spoke with AgriTalk host Jeff Flory. While China raises concerns over American boots on the ground in Asia, the country continues to grow its own footprint in the U.S. No more American lands. China reportedly owns almost 191,000 acres of U.S. land before a land deal in North Dakota this spring. Fufeng Group, a Chinese business, recently paid $2.6 million for 300 acres in North Dakota. It plans to build the milling facility. Burgum asked the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, or CFIUS, to assess the Fufeng Group's purchase as soon as possible in a letter to Janet Yellen, the Secretary of the Treasury, and Lloyd Austin, the Secretary of Defense. We ask that this review process be completed with the utmost urgency to aid Grand Forks officials in their decision-making process and provide clarity on whether this land purchase has national security implications," Burgum wrote. Fufin Group USA COO Eric Chotorash asserts that there is no Chinese government control of the company and that all of the employees at the plant will be Americans. He claims that he cannot imagine that anyone working there would engage in espionage. To better clarify its objectives in North Dakota, the Fufeng Group has consented to submit a voluntary CFIUS filing. Chutorish contends that his team has not been provided the justification for requesting a CFIUS review, despite the fact that they would be expected to do so when they offer consent. Big Trouble in Little Texas This is not the first time that the subject of China's investment in the United States has come up. The plug was pulled on a similar wind energy project in Del Rio, Texas, in April when state officials realized two key issues. Number 1. The land dedicated to the wind farm is miles from the Laughlin Air Force Base. Number 2. The Chinese company hired to carry out the job is owned by a former member of the Chinese military who has direct ties to China's ruling Communist Party. Representative Tony Gonzalez, or RTX, who unsuccessfully lobbied the Trump administration to reevaluate GH America Energy's plan to buy 130,000 acres in Texas, Val Verde County, in early 2021, has pursued alternative options. Gonzalez co-sponsored the Protecting Military Installations and Ranges Act of 2021 in April 2021 which intends to impose limitations on specific property purchases made by organizations in North Korea, Iran, China, and Russia. The Committee on Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs has been given the bill. Greater Concerns with China The U.S. government has expressed alarm over Chinese equipment's influence in rural America in addition to land. When they sold equipment to Midwest carriers, the Chinese telecom corporations Huawei and ZTE came under fire. While a number of Chinese telecom companies, notably Huawei and ZTE, have been prohibited in the United States because of its surveillance worries, doing away with their hardware hasn't been very simple. For the removal and replacement of 24,000 pieces of Huawei and ZTE equipment in the United States, Congress allocated $1.9 billion in 2020. Chuck DeVore, a former California assemblyman and retired lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Army Reserve, 
claims that none of the equipment has been taken out since the carriers estimate that the full replacement expenses will increase the price by an extra $3 billion. Chinese telecom gear is still a ticking time bomb. Devour. They require action. The time for discussion is over. Who can afford these skyrocketing prices for farmland? In Dubuque County, Iowa, last week, High Point Land Company claimed to have sold 60 acres at auction for $30,000 per acre, setting a new record for a farmland sale in Iowa. Who can afford to make these significant financial decisions when the risks are so high? Bill Gates Bill Gates Red River Trust has amassed 270,000 acres of land across the United States, including a recently acquired 2,100-acre farm in North Dakota. Despite paying $6,000 per acre to enter North Dakota, the computer tycoon might not be given the warm welcome he might have received in other states. Law-abiding citizens According to corporate farming laws in North Dakota, Businesses and limited liability entities are not allowed to buy or lease farms and ranches. North Dakotans, including the Attorney General, are worried that the Gates' recent $13.5 million acreage acquisition breaches the state law. The Red River Trust received notification of the North Dakota land law in a letter from the office of the North Dakota Attorney General. The North Dakota Attorney General, Drew Wigley, wrote, our office needs to confirm how your company uses this land and whether this use meets any of the statutory exceptions, such as the business purpose exception. President Biden has not yet decided whether to lift the tariffs on China. President Biden claims that he has not yet decided whether to remove part of the $370 billion in tariffs that the Trump administration has slapped on Chinese imports. Since many weeks ago, Biden has discussed reversing such obligations in an effort to reduce inflation while allowing businesses to benefit from new exclusion procedures. Nevertheless, there are divergent views on whether or not the cuts will occur, whether the China will respond, and how they will affect agriculture. They are informed by Farm Journal analyst Jim Weissmeyer that he is pessimistic about the possibility of tariff relief. And if it does, he claims it won't have a significant direct impact on China's imports of AG. Wise Mayer doesn't see much on the initial one since the US Trade Representative Catherine Tai wants some leverage even if China has made it clear that it won't move them. He first didn't think it would be included in the $10 billion. One caveat is that certain targeted taxes like the 25% tax on semiconductors and other components used in farm equipment, could be eliminated, lowering costs for farmers, plus the components of crop protection products. Frain Olsen, NDSU crop marketing economist, says, Some of the basic chemistry we import from China, we add in the specialized ingredients here and they're sold in the US. So, their reduction or potential elimination of import tariffs may have an impact on the input side. The cost of inputs coming in Although some import exclusions already apply to tariffs on soybeans coming from China, American Soybean Association executives say any further movement on the 301 and 232 tariffs will be beneficial. According to Steve Sensky, CEO of the American Soybean Association, even though the tariff China currently imposes on soy imports has been suspended for a lot of these state-owned firms, they're still hanging out there and it has a bit of chilling effect. Sensky is therefore positive about how the agricultural industry will be affected by at least a partial reduction in taxes. Weismeyer claims that the tariff cut is an acknowledgement that tariffs are ineffective and are likely to reduce inflation. In order to put pressure on Beijing over trade, the White House has also been considering opening a fresh inquiry into Chinese subsidies and the farm they cost the American economy. Surface Pressure U.S. Losing Farmland at Alarming Rate Every day from 2001 to 2016, 2,000 acres of agriculture and ranch land were lost or compromised in the United States, 
according to data by the American Farmland Trust, that equates to 11 million acres of farmland that have been paid over, fragmented, or built. If the current pattern holds an additional 18.4 million acres are converted between 2016 and 2040, an area almost the size of South Carolina, 6.2 million acres will be transformed into urban and highly developed land uses including businesses, factories, and moderate to high-density housing, low-density residential zones ranging from large lot subdivisions to rural areas with an abundance of dispersed homes will be built on 12.2 million acres. Almost half of the conversion will occur on the nation's most productive, adaptable, and resilient farmland. According to American Farmland Trust Farms Under the Threat 2040, this tendency may intensify because of high housing costs in urban areas and expanding remote employment options. By 2040, 24.4 million acres of agriculture and ranch land might have been converted if the rate quickens. That equates to about 1 million acres of agricultural land annually. Farmland owners' estate settlements are another factor contributing to the loss of farmland. Up to 370 million acres of farmland could change hands in the next 20 years because almost 40% of the country's farmland is owned by individuals over the age of 65. According to the study, this raises the probability that the area will be bought for development. So, what can you say about China might successfully take over America through farmlands? Please let me know by leaving a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, please press the like button, turn on the notification bell, and subscribe to Wealthology for more videos like this. Thank you for stopping by to watch. See you in our next video. Bye!